Okay, so good afternoon to you all. Uh, so today's lecture is basically to build the neural network based uh, systems using Python. So there are a lot of uh, CNN and DNN libraries are available. So using those, you can build uh, uh, the large complicated uh, high performance uh, uh, computing based uh, different neural network architecture you can build into that. But currently we will uh, not go in in that uh, sections. We'll just see that the basic things which we have learned uh, yesterday is if we don't know or if you don't have any access to any other libraries, so can we do it in Python? So with that objective, we'll try to um, carry out the today's uh, exercise. So basically what we will do is we'll, we'll create an uh, network, then we will try to implement the forward propagation and backward propagation error models. Then we can do an train uh, training of those network models. So we'll just start today's we'll be doing the basic exercise and uh, related to the training of model on a sample data sets. Uh, later on, we'll plug it with the actual satellite data sets to uh, do a uh, neural network based uh, classifications. So let's say that uh, we need to. Uh, uh, we, uh, now we are going to start it with the initial work. So in neural network, first what we have to do is we have to uh, create a structures to save the details of uh, neural networks. So generally, whenever we say uh, a neural network is uh, able to predict some information or it has learned something, so what basically it means is that it is going to have a certain weights available to it. So it means it is going to have certain weight informations about different uh, layers. And on the basis of that, we uh, it is going to do a predictions. So for that, we need to make an initial arrangement of uh, uh, creating or storing those informations. So that's what we will do is uh, we will call it that uh, creating or initializing the uh, basically the uh, network to store the uh, to store the information of different uh, of training that is that will translate to actually a weights so for that we will simply create a functions in which we will initialize it uh, basically a network and <clears throat> this network is supposed to take uh, in any neural network we need to have an inputs so there has to be a number of uh, <clears throat> inputs then there has to be a few number of hidden layer so there will be a hidden layer and corresponding the output which is expected. So number of inputs, corresponding input, hidden layer, and output. That's what we need to have. So for this, this whole weight is going to be stored in a in data structures for list. So we are going to store it in a list format. And in the hidden layer, uh, basically what we have is uh, to store or we will be having a basically it's a list of weights that is going to be stored for each of the uh, number of hidden layers so it means like if you are having an in a hidden layer, if you're having a 10 node or five node, so accordingly the hidden layer information has to be 
and like that many nodes has to be created. So yesterday we have uh, seen an example that uh, what we need to have is uh, there will be small circles what we had seen yesterday. So all those small circles are actually a node that is going to be stored in that is going to have a particular weight. So for each of those nodes, so it means like each of the elements uh, we are going to assign some random values for each of the node elements in a uh, basically in input layer. So n if you are having an n number of input layers, so corresponding number of input layer, and we need to also have a bias information because whenever we are having an input layer it is there will be a connections between different input layer and one bias uh, node also will be required so that many uh, weights has to be created from the connection or the weight for input layer to the uh, output or the uh, the next uh, hidden layer so that's what we are going to create it in in this case so this is the have a connections to different hidden layers. So basically the whatever the number of hidden nodes are there. So that's what we are going to create in, in, in this case. So uh, let's take an example of that. So let's say that you're having an you're having an input layer. So you'll be having at the input layer these three connections or nodes are there. And there is a hidden layer which is containing two nodes. And then you are having, let's say, output of two nodes. So for each of these input nodes, we need to have a connections. Okay. Similarly, we also need to have a connections to the different uh, node. So this is this whole thing is called an input layer, and in each input layer, we are having a hidden or uh, basically a small number of nodes which is going to work. Similarly, in the hidden nodes also, we'll be having an this hidden layer. And in between, you are having a weights. So this is the weights which we are trying to now define. So this weight matrix is going to connect the connection between each of the uh, input uh, uh, the node which is present in the input hidden layer to different input layer. So it means like this is the first, this is the second, uh, this is the first hidden layer and there is an input uh, layer connection. So over here, we, from this, we are going to have three different connections to each of these input layer. Similarly for this, this is the second input, a uh, second uh, node in hidden layer, and it is also going to have the number of weight assigned for each of these separately or randomly in the connections. So that's what we are trying to do it over here. So in this case, uh, so in this case, we are having an connections to the input plus one extra bias node 
which is connected to each of the nodes present in the hidden layer. So that's that's how we are going to create the first layer, uh, uh, first weight matrix. And this is going to be added to the our list. So hidden layer connections to the input layer connections that is being put in over here. The way we have defined the uh, connection for input layer in the same way we can also define the connection between hidden layer to the output layer. So for each of the output layer instead of having connection from input to output. So in the output case the input is actually your hidden layer and output is the number of outputs. That's what we are going to have. So once we have established these connections, then what we can do is we can append this uh, output layer weight over here and then we can simply return this as a network. So what we see over here, we are just creating a basic structure in which different uh, network informations will be stored. So let's say if I want to create a uh, layer or let's say I'll just call this whole function and I'll say let's say in, uh, yesterday we were using the Landsat imagery. So in the Landsat imagery, let's say we are having a seven nodes as an input. In hidden layer, we consider that there will be a five or six different combinations. So we can take maximum hidden output. And let's say in, in, in the example which uh, we have seen day before yesterday, we were having around five different classes. So for each of the five classes, we'll be having a five output node. So first output node is going to give the class output of the first layer. Uh, second uh, node is going to give you the output for the second layer. So if I do, a, if I call this, okay, so there is a issue here. Okay. So we need to import home band on. So once we initialize and we call this so initially what happens is for each of the input layer now there is a kind of different weight which has been assigned so so now we are having an assignment of different weights uh, randomly any networks whenever we starts uh, or any neural network training whatever packages may be there at the beginning it should provide a way to initialize the network in which case the data or the the weight will be having an initialization so after creating an weight where the data can be stored, now what we will do is we'll try to create a forward uh, network uh, propagation. So it means like whenever the, any input is being given, that will get multiplied by the weight and corresponding output will get generated. So that is basically a forward path uh, or forward propagation. Uh, we will call it through the network. So its basic job is to take all the input parameters and generates the output parameters. So to create a forward uh, uh, propagation network, so we will create a forward uh, uh, propagate. Propagate network, so it will require a kind of network weight. So whatever network which we have created, it should have a network weight. And for each of these uh, weight has to be uh, basically worked on each of the individual inputs. So let's say if you are having a number of inputs, so it will take an input uh, row by row basis and on the basis of that it is going to provide a uh, output. So we will take a row as an input uh, along with the, uh, uh, the corresponding uh, output. So in this case, this particular function what it will do is it will take a weight for first layer 
take the input and generate the output for the first or the hidden layer. So it means like uh, in the example which we have uh, seen over here. So in this case, what happens is we are going to have uh, basically the weight which is being defined over here. This is going to take the input and the corresponding output will get generated. So this is the weight weight function. The forward propagations will be getting what is the output which is getting generated at this hidden layer. So second time what we'll do, we'll again take this weight or we will have the second layer weight which will be defined over here and that is going to give the generate for the final output. So each of the layer correction, correct, uh, connections, we are going to have an output generated. So that's what we are trying to do over here. So we will take a first row or this also you can say that it's the layer for which we are going to generate the output. So for that, let's say in the first case or there will be an input layer. So we can call it inputs as a layer. Then for then for a particular layer in network, we will generate a new input. So new input that is nothing but uh, a corresponding uh, 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 basically uh, the uh, the generation of the or multiplication products which will get generated. So let's say that we're creating a simply a place value over here. Then for each of the neuron or each of the node, whichever word you, you want to use, which is present in a layer, what we can do is we can call the activation values. So for that, we will call a function activate. What is the activate? We will call it, uh, with, we will uh, define in a couple of minutes. So we'll be having a neuron. And from there, we will take the weights and then we will take the inputs. So in this case, what happens is that you're having a neuron uh, or basically one node taking corresponding weights for like over here, we are defining uh, over on the top over here for each of the hidden node, we are defining a connection. So same way we are trying to get a corresponding layers, one uh, uh, neuron. So that neuron, we are going to create an input uh, functions and that input uh, basically is, uh, is is given as an input to generate the activation output. Now, once this activation output is generated by an activation function, we will simply store it. Later on, again, we are going to use the uh, basically two-stage uh, propagations. Yesterday, we have seen that uh, there are two functions. One is a another one is the f of z. So what it does is one is the activation functions and second one is basically a weighted sum of all the input layers. So that's what we are trying to get the first outcome. So output and then this output will be based on the uh, basically uh, input uh, of the or the corresponding output after generated from the transfer activation function. So that's basically transfer activation function we'll call it. So once weighted sum and corresponding transfer activated function is there, then that corresponding output will be the output generated from a neuron in a corresponding hidden layer. So for that, We will simply add this over here. So this will be applicable for all the neuron present in the input layer. So this, this layer basically means the representation of 
the layer to which all the input goes in. So this is basically the layer L. So that's what we are going to um, use it over here. So in this case, we are having a layer and corresponding uh, input is going to uh, get activated. Then corresponding transfer functions will get generated. And after activation and transfer functions, the corresponding neural output from all the input layer uh, will be generated in this case. So once we are, we are done with for each of the layer present in a network, what we can do is we can simply uh, return the output which has been generated. So that's what we will do. So this new neuron input uh, for uh, which, which is nothing but a corresponding output which has been generated that is going to be uh, basically uh, get uh, returned. This is for each of the layer that is going to be generated. And then we are going to return this one. Not. Otherwise, there will be a last layer will be left. So we are going to create a forward propagation algorithms and that it will it will get uh, generated over here. So let's put it. Now this particular, if you see in this forward propagation case, it requires a certain functions, which is called activation and neural, uh, basically and transfer functions. So yesterday we have seen that there's an activation function. So activation functions you can create based on the type of, uh, there are different activate, uh, activation functions. What it does is it takes the corresponding weight and inputs and simply based on some mathematical output, it is going to generate the result. So in this case, uh, we will uh, generate it for all the values present in uh, uh, basically in different weights. So if you remember in each layer, what we are having is number of hidden layer and corresponding one weight. But the uh, so 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 that's what we are going to use it over here. So for that we will be taking a range. Length of weights. So it means all the weights which is present minus one. That's just going to get get the index from all. And then we will be having a total activation value. So it means the total activation value is going to be created. So it is, it is nothing but simply going to give you the weight multiplied by corresponding input net, uh, input nodes, and, and, and then we are going to have an output which will get uh, generated. <clears throat> so in this case, uh, yeah. it will be of the same length as the input except the, uh, the last layer. So that layer is nothing but a bias one. So we are not going to use uh, that bias because input is having all the input, but there is no connections to the bias. So bias will remain as an extra. So that's why we are making a complete copy of that. And for that total activation value, will get created based on weights and then we are also going to have an inputs. So based on these two um, products, the summation will be generated. So this is the
activation value which will be generated by the active function. So this activate function, what it's simply doing is taking the weight for each of the input and multiplying it with corresponding uh, uh, weights and inputs uh, for each of the connections. And then finally, giving a sum of all those which will be returned. So if I go back to again the example of uh, neural networks, so what we are doing is we are generating the total summation of summation at this layer. So for this particular node at hidden layer, we are taking an input, multiplying it with the weight and correspondingly it is generating one values. So for, for on this particular node, you're having three inputs, one, two, three, and the corresponding weight is getting extracted. As I was telling that, Artificially, there are also uh, extra bias layer is being created. So this bias layer is just going to give the input directly to the corresponding node. So it means this is a kind of dummy node which is being created at an, uh, at an input layer. So over here, it is not taking any input directly from the uh, layers, but extra this band has been created. So that's why we are uh, removing that uh, section over here. So we are not considering the weight which we are adding as a bias. So if you remember, there has been an additional bias which was generated at the end of the list. So that has been ignored uh, while creating an activate during the generation of the activation functions. Once the activation function has been generated, then we have to look for a way to do a transfer. So for the transfer, what we will do is, it is simply a basic comparison. So if something is more than some value, so activation value is being provided. So if it is more or less, that we can return. So in, since we are going to use a sigmoid function over here, that's the basic function which is will be used over here. So that's what we are going to use and that sigmoid function representation is one divided by one plus e to the power Values. So it is it is the formula which is uh, the activation function uh, uses. This this value is actually a sigmoid values which is being used over here. So based on these active active and forward functions, we'll be getting the total input uh, uh, layer. So we can test it uh, if we want uh, for each of the cases. Uh, but for the time being, we will just go ahead and. Uh, create uh, the back propagation stage. So under the back propagation stage, uh, there are three different steps. One is the creation of the derivative. So if you remember, there was a formula in the, in the presentation which we're talking about, there are three different parameter which has to be created. One is the derivative with respect to the activation function, then derivation of an input weight activation function with respect to the input weight, and then input weight is dependent upon, again, what's the final connection or the result which is present in our uh, model. So for that, we are going to create a back propagation network uh, back propagation formula. So for that we are going to use we are going to use a network and corresponding the error which was expected. So this is the case where the total error sum will get generated and finally based on that the result or the, or the updation of the weight can be um, carried out. So that, uh, so updation will be done at the later stage. 
but uh, before that we have to derive what is the total distribution of back propagation error which needs to be distributed across each of the connections so for that we are going to now have a back propagate network so let's say for i in reverse order because the input is from back propagation so it means output is going to generate the first back propagation error which will again get transferred into the <coughs> input layer so in, for that we are having a for i in we will just do a reversal of or we will start looking into our network uh, data sets from the output to input so that's that's what we are trying to get do is so from output to input we are going to get the last layer now so last layer in this case we can get it based on the index so initially we'll start it with the last error and we'll just see that how much error gets accumulated in the last layer due to the error which has been generated as an output so these these things we are going to have now over here if if this particular uh, error again uh, the biasing and error correction only happens uh, Uh, till the uh, i should say to the last layer so it means except the last layer there is no further propagation is there so we are just going to leave the output layer connections and apart from that other layers will be used for getting or doing computation of the output so for that what we will do is will carry out the uh, computation of the error only if it is not the last layer so it means like because last is just an output so there is no uh, uh, back propagation implementation will be we can directly derive it based on the uh, direct difference so we we don't require so if so it means like the last layer in the in the input we can simply leave uh, from the network we can leave it and accept that for all the node which is present in a, in a layer the node in which is present in a layer so all the node which is present in the layer we are going to compute the total error so initially we are going to have a zero then for for each neuron in network connection for at next layer that is previous last layer and hidden layer we are going to have a neuron and then finally that error will be computed based on the neuron weight based on the neuron weights for node j and corresponding change in error or the uh, the expected error which has been generated or accumulated at that particular neuron so we are going to have that uh, neuron delta values and finally uh once this comes this gets computed then we are going to simply append the total error generated at a particular neuron so this is the cases when we are going to compute or all the layer except the last one so if if you are not having a last layer then this is general conditions that you take an uh, uh, neuron values or the uh, or the delta values that will get computed uh, during the 
the computation of the neuron and finally output will get generated if this is not the last layer then in that case we can simply take all the node which is present in layer and compute uh, directly the differences between output and expected output. So for that we will simply create a neuron placeholder because for each of the individual node present in a layer has to be computed. So that's what we will do it over here. So we will create as per the layer. And the corresponding, sorry, corresponding output. What was there at the output layer and what was the expected? At output layer, uh, at, at output layer of JF node. So this is the So this is the case when the error is getting computed at the output. So if in the output layer, uh, it, at the last and final layer, you are having an expected output. So that will be that will be used as the deviation from expected output and the predicted output. And rest all of the cases, what we'll do is we simply take a summation of the uh, weight and multiply it by change in. Uh, computation or change in error or basically that that's what we are going to compute it. So that's these these two things we are doing it over here. And once we have created this, then what we have to do is for a network for each of the layer layer node what we need to do is we need to create a neuron and corresponding or uh, the error has to be stored so for the layer wow, what was the layer that we are going to use and within the same neuron we are going to create an delta error values and this error value is which has been computed in the previous iteration and then we need a derivative function so that's basically a transfer derivative So once you have these two available to you, then you can create uh, output. So before going and, and computing a back, back propagation error, there's one missing link over here that we need to create a transfer derivative functions. So create a transfer derivative functions, what we will do is we will use the derivative of a sigmoid function which we have used in a forward propagation layer. So in our case, sigmoid is the function which we are using it. So that, that will be kept uh, over here. So whatever output is being generated at that output value, sigma, uh, sigmoid uh, derivative function is nothing but simply taking an output and one minus sigmoid value. So that's this is the actually a mathematical uh, uh, 
formula which ensures the relationship between the sigmoid functions that if you want to compute the differences, then you simply multiply our first derivative, then you simply take a multiplication output by one minus n. So let's let's see that how this works. So for example, let's say that this, the sigmoid function is being given as s equal to one plus e to the power x. That is a sigmoid function which we are having, uh, we have defined. So, derivative of this sigmoid functions is nothing but corresponding output values or the sigmoid values multiplying with that. So, this, this relationship can be found out. So that's what we are having it over here. So we, we generate it, uh, we are computing that function to ensure that out for a derivative at a, or transport derivative at a particular uh, sigmoid function is simply taken an input and one minus difference. So this is also, see this, this, this is, looks like a entropy function. So it's, it's an entropy output which is getting generated. So when you combine these two, then you are able to compute the uh, back propagation or error propagation functions over here. Then once you have error propagations, then what we have to do is we have to update the weights. So we are going to do now updation. Based on this new Updation which has been generated using the back propagation error and corresponding adjustment has to be done. So we are going to do an update weight or we are going to do an updation of weights. So this is going to happen, this is going to happen with the functions. which will take network because network has to be updated, the corresponding row or layer, and we were also having a learning rate. So if you see yesterday, the uh, whatever we have defined, that yesterday we were defining that we are going to have a uh, total weight which will be expected or change in delta multiplied by the basically the uh, previous weight minus the uh, learning rate and uh, the corresponding derivative. So these things were being used uh, while creating an, uh, uh, our updation of the weights. So the same thing which we will carry out over here. So for i in range for each of the network, so in each of the networks layer, we will define what's the input. That input is nothing but except the last row, that's what we are going to, or except the last element. So means the bias component has been taken out and that input has been taken. So if this is or if this is not the first input or hidden layer, uh, first input layer, then we will do computation of the input because input is not having any, the input layer is not having any input from the previous node, but that directly gets assigned from the layer itself. So means this is basically the case where input is or the or in the network uh, which we are going to have uh, uh, first input hidden layer, first input layer. That's in in that case 
what's the input so in input is nothing but directly the input generated from a neuron so the input generated from the neuron is represented as an output okay and this is for each neuron so basically we are going to have for each neuron present in network layer or in the previous layer. so that's what we are going to do so for each of the neuron which is present that that will be stored as an input and based on this we are going to compute for new weights for each of the neuron in the layer in other cases so only this this particular correction is only required if there is an input layer in it. otherwise in all the cases we are simply going to Uh, take the network values which is present in each of the layer and then based on the inputs we are going to for each of the input we are going to derive a neuron weights or the new neuron weight So new neuron weights are nothing but neuron weight for J neuron is nothing but previous values. So previous values we can take, and from there we. we do an updation on the basis of giving a learning rate and then corresponding derivative of that neuron and this is for each of the uh, uh, basically uh, so neuron for in, in each layer for each of the uh, uh, neuron of a bit so once you have all these cladding computed then what we can do is we can create a new neuron weight except the last one because bias is not going to change that will remain same that is previous neuron weight minus whatever was the learning rate and corresponding neuron derivative so that is the delta value which is being generated so once we have all these information available to us then at the end we will be able to update this uh, whole networks so we are having a back propagation then network updations now we are left with two other stages which is nothing but training the network and finally generating the output so to train a network what we will do is we'll create a simply train functions which 
which will take a network. Then we will take a training data sets. Then we will take a learning rate, which will be decided. Number of epoch, which will be used for training. And finally, number of outputs, which is needed. So using this five parameter, we can carry out the training stage. So for each epoch or each training, say what we will do is, for each epoch, we are going to compute the, uh, or we are going to do a training, and then we'll compute the sum error. So in, for each error, for each epoch, what is the error which has been accumulated, thus we are going to generate. So for each of the training sample input, what is the output which has been generated by forward propagation network? for a layer or a, or a particular row or layer, that's what we can say. Then what is the expected output which is which has been provided? So that's what we will generate. So before that, we will simply assign it to be zero. That's what we are doing. So in this case, for each of the output values is initialized to a zero. So it means like we are having all the expected values which is being depicted in a output. So this output is being taken here over here. Then next stage is to update or provide the layers output values. So for that, what we will do is We will take this expected output for individual layers, neurons, except the last one, so that is the weight, uh, the bias one. The rest, all of them will be set as one. Then we are going to compute the total sum. Total sum is expected value minus the output generated. And since we are going to use the summation square error or the RMSE error, so we are simply taking an expected minus actual output a whole square. So we are taking that whole summation to square sum we are taking in. This is basically is going to be uh, generated and this is for each of the neurons. So means that we are going to expected output minus uh, expected out expected output for ith neuron corresponding output, and then we are going to take the error of that. So that is getting computed over here. Then, in in case of uh, total expected values, we are going to now. Create a sum. 
So it's basically total summation of uh, error which is getting computed. Now based on this error sum, we will carry out the backward propagation. So backward propagation error. The total error which has been generated back backward propagation error which we will try to now compute which we will try to um, generate and then later on we will do an updation so we'll take an expect uh, back propagation updated network so in this case we need a network So network at the previous stage, whatever was there, that is being taken. And corresponding expected values. So whatever the expected values which was there, or which is generated, these two are the input which is being taken for carrying out the back propagation. Error. So if you see the back propagation error is basically two input network on expected output values, and that is being used in case of training. So back propagation error is getting created, so that value will be stored directly in the network, and then at later stage we will simply do one updation of weight on each epoch. So updation of weight for the network that will get created or will be getting generated for each of the layer based on the learning rate. So once this is done, we then we can uh, go ahead. So generally what we do is we look for a kind of progress reports. The progress report, we can write it in a form of um, epoch function. So at a particular epoch, what was the learning rate which was set? So learning rate, I can set the precisions to be slow with three precision values. Percentage.pf and then cumulative error that also we will point it. So, this we are going to generate, or we will, go, we will creating, and all these values are available to us. So, we will use them. So, we will use it um, over here. Let's simply use a substitute case like what was the import, what was the learning rate, and corresponding in that is nothing but something. So this thing will get start create. So, so this this basically helps you that taking the input data set and then it is going to do a training. So let's test it uh, for a network which will have uh, basically two input and correspondingly two output. So in our case, we had taken or we have initialized this network to be of 755. But for the time being, we will to save uh, or to carry out the testing. We'll just restrict ourselves to be a two input case. So for that, uh, two input, and uh, we will not go beyond uh, two inputs. So two input, one output. That's what we will uh, use for the testing purposes. And once we will, we will have this uh, output generated, then what we can do is we can uh, directly plug into the uh, the input layer or the data frame which has been created uh, in the previous uh, lectures. 
that where you read uh, basically the uh, data set or, or you read the GeoTIFF uh, files and convert them into a data frame and that data frame can be used or in the case of point file that sampling has been done so we can use in that uh, sampling case as well but in 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 current case what we'll do is simply for sake of simplicity, uh, simplicity we are going to take or create an initialized network which will have only a two input two output and corresponding Uh, output. So that's that's what we will take it. So with this two input and corresponding output out of these two layers will getting generated. So for that we are creating an initialization. We are creating a data sets where each of the layers or each of the row is going to have some values. So let's generate some random values over here. This is one input. Same way we can have a multiple input like 1.4, 1 1.3, and the output expected is zero. So this will be given. Then the next we can have, let's say 3.3, then 4.4. .4. Output is again zero. Yeah. Then we are having some other input. So we need a few sampling input. So currently we are just testing that our network is going to work or not. So we are providing some random input values. So later on, in, in this case, each of the input values will be your band data set, which will be plugged in over here. So 8.6, say minus 4. So let's restrict ourselves to be of uh, that many size. So number of input in this case is Simply length of that data sets. Of first dimension, means the number of columns or number of rows. Which we are going to take since we are going to use the indexes, so we'll just subtract uh, minus one. Number of output. is simply the total length of each layer. So we will set it as per the rows defined, except the last one for Knowing data sets. So, this is a number of outputs which will get generated. Now, we can we can directly now initialize this. So, over here, we can take an input. There are two nodes at the hidden layer and corresponding output. That can be created. And once we have that this initialization, then we will simply call the train net. So which will have the network, data set, and different learning rates. 
of 20 epoch for the expected output or the actual output which has been generated. So let's see what we get in output. Uh, in each of the days. So now we are just going to do a testing. So let's execute all of them. I hope there is no logical error. Okay. So this is basically. So this is the case where we are having a neuron network delta. This is spelling strong. This is the neuron which we are having. So this is done then. So here we have to say if we find the rate function. So this was the case. It's I was not equal to zero. Okay, so now in this case, we are having an expected output. Zero for I range. So this is basically then set zero minus one. Six. This thing is
Okay, so I think uh, we are already running a bit late. So we'll just fix this and corresponding. Uh, uh, basically, the code will be posted on the GitHub libraries. So you can just do a practice of this and then have a look. So I'll also add the few of the uh, how to read uh, the data sets that's already we have seen in the last class. So we'll just use the same data set, the different point uh, uh, shape file point sample point data sets, and we'll plug it to train it this particular network to generate the output. Okay, so I think uh, we will take few questions now and then uh, later on uh, the corrected version or the correct version of this particular uh, python file will also will be uh, uploaded into the repository so we can take a few questions now 